Welcome to the Green Step Cities Step 4 tutorial. In this video, we're going to walk through the requirements for a city to achieve Step 4, and then we'll take a look at the Green Step spreadsheet for recording Step 4 and Step 5 metrics. This video is going to focus on Step 4, but it will also touch on Step 5 so you can get an idea for how the two steps fit together. Let's begin. The most important web page that you're going to need is this one right here, the Minnesota Green Step Cities Steps 4 and 5 page. To find this page, you can go to the main Green Step Cities page and click on Steps 1 through 5, and then the City Performance Metrics Steps 4 and 5 box on the right-hand side of the page. Or you can go to betterenergy.org, which is the Great Plains Institute website, hover over our work, current projects, Green Step Cities, and here under links, you'll find a number of helpful links, including resources from the Green Step Cities workshops, the Green Step Cities opportunities page, and here is the Step 4 and 5 metrics page. This page lays out all the important information that you'll need for steps four and five, including how they fit with the other steps, what the metrics are, the requirements that a city needs to meet to qualify for step four or five, how you submit your metrics, and the rationale for creating steps four and five. Let's actually start here briefly with an overview of the purpose for these steps. If your city is considering step four, you have already completed a number of best practice actions as you move through step two and step three. The purpose of step four is to build on what you've done by giving you a way to track data across a number of sustainability metrics. Once you have that data, you can measure improvement, which is where step five comes in. Basically, these steps are meant to show measurable benefits from Green Step City's best practices. So now that we know why we're doing this, let's look at the requirements to achieve Step 4. This table lists all of the metrics and the requirements a city needs to meet in order to qualify for Step 4. For now, I'm going to ignore this farthest rate column because it deals with Step 5. I'll come back to step five later in this tutorial. We're going to focus on this middle column. To qualify for step four, your city will need to record data for all of the metrics that are orange in this table. These are the core metrics. A couple of metrics do not apply to every city. For example, metric 11 only needs to be completed by cities with their own wastewater collection system. In addition to the core metrics, cities that are in category A or B will need to record additional metrics that they choose themselves from the remaining metrics in the table. The numbers of additional metrics that need to be completed are listed here below the main metric table. So category A cities will need to complete five additional metrics of their choice beyond the core metrics. Category B cities will need to complete three additional metrics, and Category C cities do not need to complete any additional metrics. If you aren't sure what category your city falls into, you can check on your city's page on the main Green Step Cities website. So going back to Green Step Cities website, you can click on All Cities, then click on your city's name, and here in the left corner, it will tell you what category you're in. Now back to the metrics. Each of the metrics contain multiple metric elements. In order to complete a metric, you need to provide data for all of the elements. You can see the elements and get information about how to get data for them by clicking on the metrics in this table. For example, when I click on City Buildings and Lighting, it takes me to this metric sheet. The metric sheet lists all of the elements included in the metric. You will notice that some of the elements are in green text, but I am going to ignore that for now because it has to do with Step 5. 
Here, the sheet gives definitions that are relevant to the elements. These blue element numbers in parentheses tell you which elements go with the definition. For example, this first definition, city buildings, is relevant to elements 1.1 through 1.3. Farther down the page, there are suggestions of where you can find the data for these elements. Again, the blue element numbers in parentheses indicate which elements go with which data source. The next section of the sheet describes how to do any calculations that might be necessary to find the data for each element. Don't worry, these might not be mathematical calculations exactly. For example, for these metrics, uh, such as dollars spent on energy per square foot per year, the metric sheet tells you where to find that information inside the B3 database. The next section describes why these elements are important and how improving them can benefit your city. Then there's a section on step five, and finally the contact information of best practice advisors who can help you if you have questions about particular topics. Now, I know there is a lot of information on these metric sheets, but hopefully the detail will make it useful to you. So now, let's look at the Step 4 and 5 submittal form. Back on this web page, click on the link that says, click here to download the form and fill it out offline. The same link is repeated below the metric table in the metrics submittal section. When you open the submittal form, this is what you'll see. Keep in mind that it's an Excel spreadsheet, so you can save it on your computer and come back to it just like any other spreadsheet. The form lists all of the metrics and each data element. Here is metric one, city buildings and lighting. The metric is marked with an orange core to show that it is a required metric to qualify for step four. Again, that means you will need to enter data for all of the elements in this metric. The elements are listed below the metric title. Again, the green has to do with step five, and you can ignore it for now if you are working on step four. These elements on the entry form match the metric sheets we just looked at. As you're filling out the submittal form, you will likely want to refer to the metric sheets for guidance. The only boxes that you will need to edit for this form for step four are the dark orange ones. You may want to edit these notes boxes at the end of each metric, which I'll talk more about later. But again, if you are entering data for step four, you only need to edit these orange boxes. These are your year one values. The first time that you fill out this form, year one is the current reporting year. Ideally, this means the calendar year that ended in December before you started filling out this form. For example, if you are filling out this form for the May 1st, 2017 deadline, you will be entering data from calendar year 2016. That's January through December 2016. If you've been tracking data on some other timeline, you can go ahead and enter those numbers and then explain what you did in this notes box. To enter your data, simply click on a box and type it in. So say you have 90% of LEDs in your street lights. Notice that the metrics are divided into separate tabs based on the best practice area that they address. The first tab is buildings and lighting. The tabs are down here at the bottom. So the first tab is buildings and lighting and it contains metrics one and two. Click on the transportation tab to see the next metric and so forth. If you find an element that doesn't fit your city for some reason, or you have data that addresses a similar topic, but not the exact data asked for in the form, you can enter that data and then explain what you did in the notes box. In the last tab, Economic and Community Development, you'll notice that 
Metric 16 doesn't have much in it. This is an optional metric that cities can adapt to suit themselves. If you're tracking something related to jobs, for example, you can type it into this box, then put the units in this box, and go ahead and record your number. The same goes for metric 18. So that's all there is for step four. I'm going to take a minute now to explain how this connects to step five. Let's go back to the buildings and lighting tab. For step four, you filled out the dark orange column. When you come back to this spreadsheet next year, you'll be filling in the year two values. This is where step five comes in. Year two will become your current reporting year. You can think of it as year one is the first year you recorded data, year two is the second year you recorded data. If your year one data is from calendar year 2016, your year two data will be from calendar year 2017. We will add columns for future years, but let's not worry about that for right now. When you enter your step five data in the year two column, the difference column will automatically calculate the difference between your year two and year one values. The number in the difference column will turn green if your year two value improved compared to your year one value, and it will turn red if it did not improve. So for example, I'll just put in a random number, 24, and we'll say it went down to 22. So since you want that number to go down, this column calculated the difference, and then the number turned green. Now this is where the green boxes come in. The elements that are in green boxes are eligible for step five recognition. A city must improve upon three green box elements to qualify for step five. If we go back to the web page, this information is in the metrics table. The elements listed in the right hand column are the ones that a city can improve to achieve step five. Recognition will be awarded each year, so cities have to continue to improve in order to maintain step five status. Back to the entry sheet. Remember, if you are only working on step four right now, you only need to fill in the dark orange column. So there you have it. When you're finished filling out your form, you're going to email it to Abby Finnis, the Green Step Coordinator at the Great Plains Institute. Her email is afinnis at gpisd.net. You can find it here on the web page, and it's also down here in the metrics submittal section. Remember that your form must be emailed to Abby by May 1st in order to be eligible to be recognized as a Step 4 city at the League of Minnesota Cities Conference in June. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to email the Green Step Cities Coordinators. Thank you.